Happy Thursday, year twos, and welcome to your phonics learning for today. I hope you're all feeling nice and fresh this morning and ready for some learning. Now, yesterday in phonics, we were looking at a family with just two members in the family, and we were seeing how we could use the graphemes to spell that sound. Now, have a little think. Can you remember what sound we were looking at yesterday? I'm going to give you a bit of a clue. What was it? That's right, it was the Oi family. I wonder if you can remember which family members were in the Oi family just yesterday. There were only two of them. That's right, we had Mummy Oi and we had Daddy Oi. We're going to start today's session by reminding ourselves about the Oi family and who we use when we are spelling the graphemes in the middle and at the end of each word. So you should have the OI PowerPoint coming up on the screen for us to remind ourselves. We always like to start our phonics sessions by remembering and reminding ourselves of what we already know before we learn anything new. It's important that we practice things so we don't forget them. Otherwise, if we never practice, the information we have becomes quite useless and we never know how to use it. So this was the OI family from yesterday. So we've got Mummy OI and we've got Daddy OI. Daddy OI is spelled O. I. He is a digraph, two letters making one sound. Mummy Oi is also a digraph, but she is spelt O-Y. I wonder if you could remind somebody at home about who these family members are and what it is that they do. Where in the word do they come and why? Well, I remember that Daddy Oi loves to fix things together. He's just like the glue. So he goes in the middle of words. And I know that Mummy Oi is a little bit bossy because she's super caring and wants to make sure everyone is safe. So she goes at the end of words because she's making sure everybody else is ahead of her. So Mummy Oi goes at the end, Daddy Oi usually goes in the middle. Now, after school yesterday, I decided to try and challenge myself and write some sentences using the OI graphemes, but it was such a long day, my brain got a little, little bit puzzled and I couldn't remember which family member went where. My sentence I've written has some OI words in it, but I might not have spelt them all correctly. It's your job to be the teacher now. And what I'd like you to do is to mark my words with the oi sounds in them. If I've spelt them correctly, could you give me a green tick or any coloured tick? In fact, you may not have a green pen at home. If I haven't spelt them correctly, would you mind fixing the spellings for me to help me remember what it is I have to do? You might notice as well, unfortunately, Miss Pope's tired brain meant she didn't quite make her second sentence make sense. I wonder if you could reread it and cross out the word I did not need in my sentence. So, you might want to pause the video here. There's also a copy of these sentences on Teams so that you could print it if you need to and see it or edit it online. And then we can continue from here. So I did notice after putting my less tired brain back on that I had managed to be su successful at spelling two of the words correctly. In soil, I heard and listened carefully to that oi sound, noticing it was in the middle of the word. So I used daddy oi, o i. And then I noticed and enjoy the oi was at the end. So I used mummy oi, o y, giving myself a pat on the back. Great job, Miss Pope but there were quite a few mistakes that I made. So well done if you noticed my errors and managed to fix my spellings. Remember, it's okay to make mistakes because it's when we make a mistake that we, our brains grow and we learn more. If we don't reread our writing, we would never spot our mistakes and so our brains wouldn't grow quite as quickly as they do. Now let's have a look at what we're doing today. Today we're looking at the phoneme that matches this picture on the screen. Oh, a tree has fallen on the goat! This is not good! Can anyone remember what sound this represents? I'm giving you a clue if you can see me in the bottom. That's right, it's oh! Like, oh no, the poor goat! Everybody do the action and say the sound with me. Oh! Everybody together? Oh, and again, 
Oh, can you do your most shocked O? Oh, can you do your saddest O? Oh, can you do your manliest O? Oh, could you do the Queen's O? Oh, everybody, what sound is this? Oh, fantastic. I heard you all nice and clear. Now I wonder if you could write down any of the O graphemes you know. We do know quite a few. We've learnt digraphs, we've learnt split digraphs, we've learnt single letter graphemes that spell the O. I wonder if you could write down as many as you know now. Now that you've had a go at that, I'm going to reveal a couple of graphemes. Now these two are the only two we'll be looking at for today, that's why I'm revealing them. But there are some other O graphemes that you may well have written down. Today we're going to be looking at two digraphs, two letters making one sound, the OA and the OW. In this phoneme spotter, there are some words with the O sounds in them. What I'd like you to do is to read it and then find the O words. When you find the O words, maybe you can write the words with the OA on one side of a piece of paper and then on the other side in another column, perhaps you could write the words with the OWO sound. Then I'd like you to notice something about where these graphemes are used in the spellings. The sentence here says, the goat sailed a slow boat for a show. He didn't know that the toad over the road was to row tomorrow as well. Can you pause the video and try and find all of those O words for, for me? Here they are. I've coloured those um, sounds in red for you. So we've got words like goat, slow, boat, show, no toad, road, row and tomorrow. All of those words had our O sound in, the O phoneme that we're looking at today. Now I've written those words onto the screen here and on one side I have all of the O words that have the O A and on the right hand side all of the words that have the O W spelling that sound. What do you notice about the position of the grapheme. Where in the word does each grapheme come? You may need to stop and have a think before I share what I've noticed. Let's be noticing bush babies together. Now I've noticed on the left hand side the OA seems to be in the middle of words. Do you agree? You do? Fab. And on the right hand side, where does that OW seem to be? Yes, seems to be at the end of words. I wonder what family member that might be. Let's find out. So these are just two members so far of the O family. We have Mummy O, O W. She's called Willow and she's like the other mums we know so far. That means, you've guessed it, she goes at the end of words because she's just being that little bit bossy. Grandpa O has very has a very bad knee and he needs a little bit of help and support to stand up. So that's why he goes in the middle of words because he needs the help of the other letters around him so that he doesn't fall down. So we're going to try and use these rules today to help us to spell some words. On my screen I have some graphemes already written. Where the empty space is which sound do you think we're going to have to say to make this word? That's right, the O sound. So let's sound talk what's on the screen, adding the O phoneme in the missing space. What word are we writing here, everybody? B, O, T, boat. Hmm, the O looks like it's in the middle of a word. Who belongs in the middle of a word? Was it Grandpa O-A or Mummy O-W? Of course, Grandpa O-A, because he's got his sore knees and he needs the support of the other two graphemes so that he doesn't fall down. There he is. Let's sound talk this word together. B, E, U, O, below. Hmm, where is this O phoneme? At the end of the word. So who must this be? It must be mummy, and mummy is spelt O-W. 
There she is at the end of the word. Can you sound talk this word with me? R O S T roast. Hmm, have a little think. Who might this be? And why do you think it might be Grandpa? Oh, because he's got his sore knees and he needs help to stand up. Let's have a look and see if you're right. Fantastic. What fantastic explaining this morning. And our last word, oh, quite a long one. This is a compound word. So we're going to stop in the middle, blend, and then we'll add the rest of the word on. R A N. Rain. B O. Bow. What are we writing? Rainbow. Fantastic. Where in the word is the O sound? You've guessed it right at the end. Who do you think this is going to be? And why? Of course you know it. It's O W, Mummy O, at the end of the word. Now, here are some pictures like yesterday. You know what I want you to do. I want you to have a go at sound talking, what you can see on the screen, and then where you hear the O sound, I want you to think carefully about whether you're using mummy O W or grandpa O A to spell your words. Think carefully about where mummy goes and where grandpa goes. I'm going to say the words that match the pictures on the screen so that you can have a go at spelling them. So, first we've got a picture of something snowy. That's the word snowy. We've got a cockroach, cockroach, an arrow, arrow. We've got coaches, coaches. We have roast, roast, and window, window. So have a careful think about where you can hear that O sound and think carefully about which of the family members you're going to use. When you've done that, you could take a picture and send that in to us. If you really want to challenge yourself, like I said in previous sessions this week, maybe have a look around the things at home that have the O sound in and try and spell them. Maybe like your elbow or your pillow. Who knows, you might have lots of things at home with the O sound in them. Um, you could then even try and write some of them in a sentence to show off your writing skills too. At some point, not this week, but in the future, we will meet the other O family members. So I wonder, whilst you're having a go at reading things at home, maybe you could see which O family members you can notice in books or in texts or in signs or things you read at home. And you could maybe note them down so that when we come together to look at the O family a little bit more, you might be able to remember some things you've seen before. If you really want to push yourself, I will also attach some alternative spellings for the O phoneme onto today's um, team's assignment as well. So if you're thinking, we're really keen to have a go at some more spellings and show off what we can do, I've also put this worksheet on there for you, where it's got the grapheme at the top that you have to use, and the pictures correspond to an O word. For example, the first one is a goat. Now we know we need to use the OA for goat because the OA is written above it. But we also know that because we've now learned that we use the OA when we hear the sound in the middle of words. So you could practice trying to use the OA, the OW, the OE digraph and the OE split digraph. So that's an extra challenge if you're feeling really keen this Thursday morning for your phonics. But that's not something you have to do. It's if you would like to have a go. So that's it for today. And then I'll see you um, tomorrow when we will be looking at another sound family together. So until then, take care and have a lovely morning. Bye bye, everybody.